Today you're going to learn about mini bike carburetors. What I mean by that is you're going to learn probably the simplest way to understand what's going on with the gas. And that's specific because I'm assuming that your the air part, the choke, is already works and is hooked up. And the slide that goes up and down the throttle slide is working as well. We're just going to deal with the gas today. But you're going to learn what's going on and it's going to help you diagnose a lot of problems common problems that people have with mini bike carburetors so this is basically what a mini bike carburetor looks like it's got the gas intake the choke the bowl and the tunnel for it to get into the engine they're all built pretty much the same so this could apply for most non uh, fuel injected carburetors older bikes mini bikes and stuff like that. So let's get at it So they all have a bowl and see this bowl here is kind of a gas repository It's where the gas comes in and it's what the bike uses to run uh, and, and, and without running out as a constant thing It's got a little reserve in there that it works off of and this Glass is going to represent this bowl. So when I take it off What you see here is a little float so a float comes up here and that regulates how much gas is in the bowl or I should say it shuts off the gas that's coming down from the tank when it gets too full so there's just not a ton of gas and it works off the gas that's in reserve in the bowl. It kind of works if you're familiar with a the toilet there's a float which is this thing and that's attached to a needle that goes up when it when it fills up it shuts off pushes that needle and shuts off the gas flowing so it's really simple way to think of the float is as this level gets higher this float which represents the float will go higher and it's attached to a needle that shuts off the incoming gas so you never can have too much gas in there and a lot of times uh, with, if you're struggling for gas and you've checked everything else sometimes the float level is off so it's it's not getting enough gas or it's not um, or it has too much gas if it's overflowing so you can check that first step but, but that's the float so secondly and I don't know if you can see it here there's two pipes you can see those are called jets there's the the pilot jet which is the small one and the main jet which is the big one and they each have it's their own distinct uh, thing to do so the the pilot jet is, is the smaller one and that one is responsible for idling and starting so if you have trouble idling and starting a lot of times since it's the smaller tube in all the carburetors it, it gets clogged up some just nasty stuff gets in there maybe it got past the fuel filter so take like a brass wire or something really thin not nothing that can hurt the metal around it and just make sure that that is free and clear if you're having trouble idling so that's the idle jets and I know the title of the, the, the channel is gas and spark but it's gas spark and air it's not only air it's the correct ratio and the only thing that a carburetor does is gets gas and it gets air in the perfect uh, when it's set right in the perfect ratio for it to be most efficient and there's certain things when it's too rich which means there's too much gas not enough air and lean too much air and not enough gas that 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 that's that are symptoms like bogging down when you go to throttle but we'll we'll get into that and then you have what's called the main jet which is much bigger and that is responsible for after you idle when you when you when you crank on the the throttle and you want to actually start picking up speed and a lot of times you know this is clogged when it's either bogging down or it's not getting enough gas or it's stalling when you're trying to you know switch through the gears that's kind of the purpose of these and each one of these uh, usually has a screw that adjusts the amount of gas versus air ratio so that's the way you can get and there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to do that that's a science in its in its own but if you've cleaned these and made sure that they're completely free of debris and they should be working and it's still bogging and chances are your air to fuel ratio is off and you can start messing with those screws the throttle screw actually just adjusts the slide up and down that lets how much gas in it's a very complicated concept of what happens to the gas in there and, and atomizes and mixes with the air but but physically you can do a lot 
if you know this basic principle of what's happening in the carburetor, you can do a lot to try to solve some problems that you're having with the carburetor. If you're gonna work on bikes, you're gonna have to know this stuff and you're gonna have to start learning a lot about carburetor. A lot of people I know that work on these bikes still just pray to the carburetor gods that everything works and when it doesn't, they're kind of stumped and they don't know what to do. But what you should do when you buy an old mini bike is definitely take it apart. There's not many pieces, usually just the float, the needle, and there's a lot of, there's some little screws in there that you have to take out in order to kind of make sure that it's all clean. But go in there, clean out the carburetor, get it all as nice as you can, spray it, soak it, you know, do the, 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 the sonic shaking, get everything clean as you can because a clean carburetor is going to take away a lot of the trouble that you're going to have with older mini bikes and older carburetors. So please subscribe to the channel and uh, like the videos. It really helps. I'm um, trying to, you know, get a whole bunch of little things like this that, that can help you uh, fix your own mini bikes and, and still have fun out there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later.